let's go ahead and get into the tech news for the week or for the day. AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D CPU beats the 12900K. Yes, we do have the 12900KS as well that recently launched and I haven't picked one up yet. I definitely am interested. But why am I not picking that up? And why am I going to pick up a 5800X3D for my CPU uh, for essentially the month, right? I can't afford to buy both. They're not gonna really ROI uh, for mining, at least the 12900KS. Part of the reason I want the 5800X3D is the massive amount of cash and the mining potential that it provides. So that is the CPU which releases on April 20th that I am interested in purchasing uh, for review on the channel, just to be clear. AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X3D has been tested against the i9-12900K once more, and we will see if DDR5 is enough to keep Alder Lake in the lead. The latest gaming benchmarks for AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D are once again published by tech outlet Zano, uh, Zan, Zanzo Gaming, I think is how that would be. Today, is the day when other media outlets will be posting their own reviews. The previous benchmarks did feature the AMD Ryzen 5800X3D running against the i9-12900K uh, K CPU, but only with DDR4 memory up to 3600 megabits per second. The latest benchmarks show us what the performance looks like when the new 3D vCache CPU is tested against Alder Lake with DDR5 memory. For this purpose, a set of DDR5 6000 CL40 memory was utilized, and that gives another price advantage to the red team considering the high prices attached with going uh, the DDR5 route on the six, Z690 platform. Meanwhile, users can simply run their existing DDR4 kits on the AM4 platform, and the CPU upgrade alone will allow for much higher performance. As for the benchmarks, besides Assassin's Creed Origins, the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D outperformed or managed to stay on par with the i9-12900K plus the DDR5 memory. This is again an impressive showcase of the 3D vCache offering a bigger performance bump over Intel's faster Alder Lake CPU for gaming. Another section where the 3D vCache really helps is the 1% lows, which are much higher than what the 12900K produces in the same games. So as you can see here, we have the Witcher, and we won't go through all the slides, but the 58, uh, 5800X3D with the obviously DDR4 at 3200 megahertz had a average frame rate of 253 frames per second and a min of 155. Now, what you'll notice is that the 12900K, while above they stated had better min 1% lows, doesn't actually have better 1% lows in The Witcher. So it, it, it does get beat out in the average frame rates at 239 frames a second, but on the 1% lows, it maintains 177 frames per second versus, of course, the 5800, which was at 155. Uh, that does start to change though as you go through some like Strange Brigade. Uh, one important note here is Async is on and DirectX 12. I think here was DirectX 11, right? Um, and then on the Shadow of War, you have basically null, pretty much null the same, pretty much the same performance. What's impressive of course is that you're talking about a slightly cheaper CPU at $450 US, and it'll hit retail on the 20th of April. From a mining perspective, why are we excited about this CPU? Well, it's a new cache system that's being done. It's stacked cache. It's going to have a ton of L3 cache available, which should mean, in theory, that we will get really good mining performance, especially on algorithms like uh, Raptorium. So that's kind of why we're really interested in it over, of course, um, the 12900KS, which wouldn't be as much. So there you go. That's why I am interested in that CPU. 
I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.